Hey everybody, welcome to lesson 2.2, Xperia and sickle cell disease. We're using the evolution tool today uh, to look at malaria and the sickle cell disease demo. Uh, my name is Laura McGinty, high school biology teacher over at Ballard High. Uh, glad to be here with you. To use this video and this PowerPoint, it's always important to make sure you work at your own pace uh, because the health of you and your family, of course, come first. Whenever it's possible to work through the activities with somebody, do so. It um, makes the experience enjoyable if you can, uh, and uh, it helps you kind of think through the process. You might also find it helpful to have a scrap piece of paper or notebook to record your thoughts or questions. Um, you'll also need the handout that I'm going to introduce to you uh, here in a moment. Read through the slides one at a time or go through the video as you need to, pausing and rewinding as, uh, as necessary. If you are on the PowerPoint, uh, if there are any links, explore those links. Uh, as with the video or the PowerPoint, explore the images uh, that are present. If you do come across something that you want more clarification on, you don't understand, whatever the issue may be, uh, make a note of it, uh, the timestamp, uh, what PowerPoint slide you're on, uh, and then go through the remainder of that. And if you find that you still want some clarification around it, uh, reach out to your teacher, uh, talk to a peer, talk to uh, somebody in your household, make sure that you're asking those questions. Finally, when you do finish, uh, take the opportunity to explain your thinking. Uh, share your ideas with people. It helps you retain the information and it helps you make sense of the information as you're doing it. It's a really powerful learning tool. The goals that you have for this particular lesson um, are threefold. You, uh, you want to identify the factors or the selective forces that affect survival and reproduction in the environment. You want to be able to identify the variations of hemoglobin genotypes and phenotypes and their frequencies based on ecological factors. And then you want to be able to identify and explain the interactions between genotypes uh, and the ecology over time. So as you can see here on the right side, this is the evolution tool uh, for malaria and sickle cells disease de uh, demo. You'll want a printed copy or you want to recreate a version of it in your notebook or scrap paper. You're also going to want to have access to the data from Lesson 2.1, which I do include here in the video. And um, bringing that background knowledge from the inheritance unit will help you with your explanation process. We're going to break down the different parts of this particular handout as we're working along. So you can do this in one of two ways. You can have the handout with you. Uh, and then fill it in as you go, or you can just go through the video um, and then when the video is over, go back and fill it in as you need to. So the first section that we're going to look at is the ecology section. Remember from ecology, that's all the living and non-living things within that environment that impact this. So in this particular one, you can see here there is the malaria is present and malaria is not present in the environment. So these are pre-filled for you, but um, they're essential to consider when addressing the questions, uh, and it presents the factors that influence survival and reproduction. So when malaria is present, we have both sickle cell disease and malaria. When malaria is not present in the environment, however, the ecology shows that sickle cell disease does affect survival and reproduction. And notice that there is nothing here recorded for malaria because it's not something that impacts. For variations, variations in the population are referring to genotypes and phenotypes. Refer back to the inheritance unit uh, or lesson 2.1 malaria and sickle cell disease demo to help you fill this out. The top part of the worksheet fills in that first box for you as a guide and you can see that you have the um, homozygous dominant here, the AA genotype which has the phenotype of normal, uh, normal hemoglobin. So again, you have the genetic traits right there, genotype, uh, and the observable traits, which is the phenotype. Then you'll fill in the remaining two uh, there. The interactions between variation and ecology. So you take those first two columns, um, and then you compare and see how they relate to each other, how they interact with each other. This is going to be a really short explanation uh, that 
shows that genotype-phenotype interaction. The example that they give here for AA, it shows that individuals with AA genotypes do not get sickle cell disease, which is abbreviated SCD, but they are susceptible to malaria. So take that, and then you're going to fill in those three uh, variations, so all three. That first one's filled in for you on that top part. The gene pool, this is the frequency over time, and you're gonna use the data tables from 2.1 to help you do this. Time one refers to parent population, so that original population of 50-50. Uh, you have time two, which is the first generation, and time three is the second generation, so to keep that in order. Uh, and remember, simulation two versus simulation three, there are going to be some differences there. Uh, so tracking the generations across time uh, for the frequency, uh, gene frequency. So at this point, you can pause the video and record the data that you need to. Uh, you have um, table 1.1 right here is the parent population. There's that allele frequency that we just talked about. Table 2.1 is the first generation, or time two. And then uh, table 2.2 here is the second generation of offspring. This is the sample data. Uh, so this is for all three times for the area there where there is no malaria. So to use this, you can pause the video at this point and record the data that you need. You'll also notice that there are the genotypes right there for you as well. This particular one is where malaria is present. Uh, so make sure that you're uh, attentive to that. That's actually the second section on the front page. Uh, your allele frequency column falls on the different tables here on this side, uh, on the right-hand side of the data. And then again, you have your genotypes uh, over here as well. So this would be another place that you could pause the video and record the data that you need to help you fill in the sheet. On the back side of the sheet, there is a place where you're going to do a written explanation. And uh, to read this, it says, explain the evolution of sickle cell disease using the evolution three questions. Variation. What differences are there among the population? Ecology. What factors affect the survival and reproduction of individuals in the population? Interactions between variation and ecology. What changes have occurred in the population over time or in different areas? Essentially what you're doing with this written explanation is you're taking the graphic organizer on the front and putting it in essentially a kind of a paragraph form. It's a written summary that compares the variation ecology and interactions between those two in an area with malaria and then in an area or an environment without malaria. So it kind of creates a more comprehensive explanation of what's going on. The final thing here is to check your understanding. You've identified factors or selective forces that, um, that affect survival in an environment. You've identified variations in hemoglobin genotypes and phenotypes, as well as their frequencies based on ecological factors. You've also identified and will explain uh, the interactions between the genotypes and ecology over time. Your next steps at this point are to create a row on your learning tracker for lesson two. Now lesson two encompasses both 2.1 and 2.2, so that's the uh, malaria and sickle cell disease demo, as well as the evolution tool that we just went over. Uh, as always, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all of your hard work, uh, everything that you're putting to this. Uh, and I really appreciate your time. Hope you have a beautiful day.